Hello everybody, I'm Rick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can add mocking in your unit tests in .NET using any substitute. Mocking, put very simply, is the idea that because classes can have dependencies like a service that uses the database or the file system, we don't want to actually call the database as part of our unit testing or create a file in the file system. Instead, what we want is to simulate the behavior of that service in order to test the minimum amount of code that we need to test in a controlled and predictable way. This is where mocking frameworks come into place and the idea of mocking in general. They allow us to create the simulated behavior by mocking the implementations of the interfaces or virtual methods. Normal method implementations are not mockable, so you need to use interfaces or virtual methods, and interfaces are highly recommended. In this video, I will show you how you can mock in .NET using my personal favorite mocking framework called nSubstitute. I like to see nSubstitute as a cleaner mock or a cleaner fake it easy, and I will show you exactly why I think that's the case in this video. This video is part of my Essential NuGet Packages series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe and ring the sub notification bell to get notified when I upload a new episode. So what I have here is the same API as the one I used in the mock video. And I'm just going to quickly show you what this API does. It has three endpoints. We can get all the customers in the API. Currently have two customers. We can get the customer by ID. So if I get this ID and I use it here in, in a very restful manner, I'm going to get um, that customer back. And I can just create a new customer here by using the post endpoint. And when I do that, the customer is created and they are attached there. And for my database, I'm using uh, SQL Lite, and you can see here my file. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the database, and I'm going to quickly take you through that. Uh, we really want to test the customer service, which is what is doing all the actions in the controller methods that you can see here. And uh, that service has a get all async, which is calling the database, and it is doing some logging. A create async and a get by id async. Very usual basic stuff. And I want to test this method and I'm going to use, like I said, and substitute to do that. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and create a new project and I'm going to name it uh, in the same fashion as the mock one. Um, whoops, that's the wrong one. I'm going to choose the unit test project here and I'm going to say customers api dot n substitute and then I'm going to choose X unit here and just click create and with my test project created I'm gonna go ahead and rename this unit test one class to something that makes more sense uh, which is customer service and then the test suffix that's how I like to name my uh, unit tests the way I like to name my unit tests is I'm using the name of the class that I'm testing and then the test actually this is wrong it's the tests suffix and I'm going to show you in a second how I'm naming my tests. What I need to do first is I need to add a reference to the main project. And I'm going to do that here. So now I'm referring to this. And I also need to add the nSubstitute package. And I go to the uh, NuGet here. And I say nSubstitute. And it comes as the first one, version 4.2.1. And I click yes. And I add it. And that's it. And now I can write my test. The first thing I do is my system under test, and that is the uh, private read-only iCustomer, not repository, iCustomer service. And I'm going to name that SUT, which means system under test. And I'm going to go to the constructor. I'm going to say SUT equals new customer service. And this service needs two things, the customer repository and the logging service. So I'm going to go ahead and create those. So as opposed to mock, where we create a new mock of an object that we're testing, a new mock of an interface, in nSubstitute, you do private read-only, and then you just use the interface you want. So in this scenario, is the i customer repository, and I'm going to name it customer repository, and I'm going to say equals substitute for, and then the type, and customer repository. And this will actually create not a mock type, but the type itself. And I will do the same for the i logging service. So i logging service, which I need, underscore logging equals substitute for the i logging service. As you can see, usually in mock we would have a mock of that type. Here with and substitute we have the type itself. And I can just use the type here. So 
customer repository goes first and login goes second. And that's it. And now we're ready to write our tests. Now, the first thing I want to test in that method is the get by ID async method. And this is an asynchronous method that does a call to the uh, repository, which has the same method within it. And if, you, if we take a look at that method, it calls the database, it creates a database connection, and it does a select. We don't want to do that. What we want to do instead is, in a very controlled way, we say, okay, if there is a customer, then something should be returned, and potentially something should be logged as well. So let's take a look at the first part. I'm going to create my test, and that will be a fact using XUnit. And then public async, not assert, async task. And then I like to use the name of the method I'm testing first. So get by id async underscore should return customer underscore when customer exists. And here is what I want to do in my test. I also like to use the, what, what many people call the AAA approach, which is split my test into three sections, arrange, act, and assert. In arrange, I'm arranging all the properties and potentially constants I'm going to use for my test, also what I expect the assertion to validate against. The act is the single method that we're actually calling for the test to do uh, the action, um, and it usually is this get by ID async or whatever we use here. And then assert is just doing the assertion, making sure that the value we get back is the expected value. So um, under arrange, in fact, I'm going to start with assert and I'm going to save our customer, which is uh, the result is await sut dot get by id async because that's what we're testing. And as you can see, we need a customer ID here. So I'm going to create a variable at the top called customer ID equals GUID dot new GUID. So I'm going to create a new GUID and I'm going to pass this here and be done with this. This line will not change. So now what we need to do is in that service, like I said, we are using the get by ID async method of the repository. We need to mock that now to return a customer. And then we're going to validate that this customer was successfully mapped from a DTO, which is being returned by the repository, as you can see uh, here. Let me just go into the method. It returns a customer DTO and it is being mapped to a customer object. So let's test that. What we need to do is mock that call. And how do we mock it? Well, I'm probably going to need a customer name as well to write the test again. So Nick Chaps, this is the name. And uh, the customer DTO that I want my uh, mock service to return is a new customer DT. I totally misspelled that. DTO and the ID equals the customer ID and the name, full name, equals the customer name. And because the uh, this is a GUID and this is uh, not a GUID, it's a string, I need to do a two string here. And then the last thing of my arrangement is to say that customer repository, and then I have to pick the method that I want to mock. So I'm going to say get by ID async. And I'm going to use the customer ID, which is the value that will call this method. And then I say dot returns. This is an extension method coming from and substitute. So you're going to see this returns here. And we say that we want this to return the customer DTO. And this is how we are mocking this method. It's very simple. It's very intuitive. It's very, very clean. And I love it. And you will see that it will now do the job. So I'm going to say assert equal and what we are expecting is the customer id and then what we want to validate is that the customer dot id is equal to that and then i'm going to write another assertion and i'm going to say assert dot equal and what i want to check is that the expected thing is the customer name and it should be mapped correctly from the customer dot full name what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the uh, unit testing window down here. I'm going to create a session from the end substitute tests and I'm going to run them and let's see what's happening. And sure enough, as you can see, the test is working. Now, what I want to do here, and that's going to be really interesting, is debug this test. 
And the reason why I do that is because I want you to see that the customer repository, its type is an object proxy of a substitute of the interface that we are testing. So a substitute will use this interface and it will create an in-memory proxy object for it, just like any other mocking framework would do. The very nice thing about it is because it's built on extension methods, you don't need to carry around a mock class. You can just have the raw interface and deal with elegant extension methods, which I think is just a brilliant approach. So we're going to go ahead and stop this and I have my first test successfully passing. Now, I also want to test that, as you can see here, there is also uh, the, uh, let me find the, <laughs> the method again. There's also the possibility that the customer is null, so we need to make sure that this is returning null. So we're going to write a test about that and the test will be another fact. Let me just minimize the window. And that fact will be a public async, not what I just wrote, async task. And the name will again be get by id async because that's the method that we are testing. And the name will be um, should return null when customer does not exist. And here is where our uh, code goes. Again, triple A approach, arrange, octa set. And what we're going to have in a set is actually minimal code. What we want to say is customer repository, and we're going to mock that method again. And we're going to say get by ID async. And now we don't really care about the ID here. Any ID in this specific test, we want it to return null. So what we're going to do is we're going to say arg. And this is similar to how it works in uh, mock, for example. I'm going to say arg any good. So for any good, I want you to dot returns null. And of course, because null can't be deferred to a type, we need to actually use a different extension method called returns null. Now, if you were returning an object, you would use return. And that's why I want to show you that here. But in this scenario for null, you are just using the returns null approach. And now for any GUID, this method will return a null. So I can go ahead and copy that act section because it should be the same. The only thing that will change is instead of the customer ID, I want to say GUID.new GUID and just generate a random GUID. And what I want my assertion to be is I want to assert that something is null and that null is the customer. So if I bring up the unit test uh, window again and I run them, I expect both of them to pass now. And as you can see, both of them do pass because this returns null and the customer is appropriately mapped to a null. Now, here is something interesting about uh, this here, this method. Something else that's happening is we're logging some messages. And ultimately, if those messages are part of some alerting for some reason, or especially metric collection are part of some alerting, you want to make sure that these are logged. The problem with that is they are not returning anything. So you cannot just assert after the fact. You have to just verify that these methods are called. So how do you do that in nSubstitute? Let me just show you. We're going to create a new test here. And that's going to be a fact again. And it's going to be a public async task. And the name will be in the same way, get by id async prefix and then underscore should log appropriate message when customer exists. And that's what we want to test here. So again, AAA, arrange doctor set. The uh, first thing, again, actually the action is the same. In fact, let me go back to the first test. I'm going to copy most of it. I'm going to change the assertion though. So what I need to change here is the assertion needs to go. We're not going to assert against that. And um, I don't really think I need to change anything in the mocking part. So my method will do exactly the same. Now you might say, why don't you put the extra sessions here? Well, I like my unit test to test a single thing at a time. So if I'm checking that the user is returned properly, that's one test. Then if for the same thing, I check that the logs or the metrics are collected properly, that's another test. I don't want to mix them up. I want to keep them separate. 
So here is my new assertion. And all I want to check is that in this scenario, this log information method is called with these very specific parameters. So retrieved a customer with ID and a customer ID as an argument. So the way I test that the logger was actually called properly is I'm using the logging service, which is our, as you can see, our mock here. And I'm saying logging.received. This is where I'm starting. And I can have a quantity as well. So I want this to be received once. So one received called exactly here. And then I say dot log information, which is the method I want to make sure that was called. And because I care about the argument, I will copy these two arguments here and I'm going to paste them as parameters here. And what this will do is it will ensure that this method, a call to this method was received exactly once with these specific parameters. If I didn't care about one of the arguments, I could just say, for example, here, the customer ID, I could just say arg dot any, and the same arg approach would work to say any of a type. So this is how you would essentially ignore one uh, deeming it irrelevant. And you can also have a received for any args approach here. So that's up to you. And at this point, I can just uh, delete that because I don't really use it. So let's see how this test does. And I expect it to pass. As you can see, this test is passing because the method is called exactly once. If I change it to two and I run it again, you will see that this test will now fail because it's not actually called twice, it's only called once. Uh, the other thing I want to test is that even though this is a successful request and I'm checking that this is called, I might also want to check, potentially not in a realistic scenario, you might have a separate test for that, but just to demonstrate the capabilities of the library, I might want to check that the method is not called with this message here, which only is triggered when something is null. So I'm going to copy the parameters here and I'm going to go back to the test and under my first test, I'm going to say logging dot did not receive. And I could have a times here, but I'm going to leave it to any times. And I'm going to say log information and the message that we get when the customer does not exist. And when I run this now, as you can see, all my tests are passing because this happy method is called once, but the null scenario is not called at all. These two usages of and substitute, and that's exactly what I showed for mock as well, I think covers at least 80% of all the common mocking scenarios. You can have more elaborate things like event handlers and callbacks and stuff like that, but, but those are more advanced scenarios. I'm going to leave it to you to read further documentation because I could be talking for hours and I want to keep these videos short and to the point. So that's all I want to show you about and substitute. It is my framework of choice. I highly recommend you use it. It will really declutter your code if you're using Mock or Fake It Easy. That's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new episode. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.